Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing really good. Uh, I got a pretty cool knife to show you. It's sitting right out here. It's a 1930s Ideal Company, or Ideal Cutlery Company, Granddaddy Barlow. So we'll go over that in a minute. First I want to run through a couple updates. Uh, the first update would be Cyclops Kirk Douglas. Um, as you see, I didn't get too much farther on them, and that's because uh, although I knew it was coming, I wasn't sure. Um, last Friday, uh, my employer shut down the, the company until September 21st, and that's because we got so far, so far ahead on our contracts. Um, actually, we, we got so far on some of the contracts that they're done for the year, you know, through 2020. So we got a return date of September 21st. Um, so I, I took advantage of the time off. Um, I've been off all week and I got went and visited my parents and took care of um, some personal things with my girlfriend and um, <clears throat> didn't really get much done on Cyclops uh, Kirk. So, but however, what I did do is, uh, last I told you, I, I was looking for a knife that, or a blade that would be good to scoop the brow out so I could carve in the eye. And you'll see all these knives out here. That's because I was going through looking for what the best one would be because the pocket carver comes with three Warncliffs and the Warncliff is really good for carving but as far as scooping material out it's not the best for that <coughs> excuse me so what I came up with was the Camillus 1960s Camillus Barlow this is a beautiful knife and the reason I came up with this is I found all the pen blades of the knives that I were checking over there were too flimsy. And what you need to carve with is a nice sturdy blade that's not going to bend on you just to give you that secure feeling. And this is the one that I took the bend out so I had to heat it up to take the bend out and quench it with cold water so it's hardened. Um, it's, it's hardened quite a bit actually and I'll show you how effective this knife is and it's really fun to carve with and if I wanted to scoop a little bit um, you'll see you can really get in there and get some material out so this is going to be I'll be I'll be using this quite often to carve with because it makes this wood feel like it's a bar of soap. And it's just cutting right through all that. Let's do it this way so you can see. So when I get farther on uh, Cyclops Kirk, we'll have another progress report. But like I said, I got a lot of time on my hands now, and I took care of a lot of personal business over the last four days. So we'll put Kirk right back here, and we'll do a quick spin around the block. There's some new things out, but most of it's just a mess. Um, let's take a spin back this way. You'll see the Victorinox solos. And I got a surprise in the James and Company uh, pocket knife box that I'll be doing a video of pretty soon. You got the Solos, the Toad Sticker, Victorinox Farmer. Over here we have the Taylor Eyewitness Beauties. I, I call that Beauty Row. Um, the GI Utility, Victorinox Warthog. Big John Henry up there uh, protecting the scene, overseeing everything, and you guys get the picture. 
will come over here. I uh, this morning I read a comment from one of our uh, subscribers, Stone Mason, and he was calling these seven Barlows the Magnificent Seven. So I kind of like that. If you guys want to go back to, uh, I think it's the last video where the comment is. And he left a link to the theme song to uh, the Magnificent Seven, which I was humming all day until now, because now I forgot how it goes. But you'll see it's quite a bit of a mess. Um, something that's coming up here is something I've always wanted and I know some people just don't like Parker brand knives but this is a Parker little bandit with as you can see it has the raccoon etch on there you got your double um, your long pole in the eye neck nail neck real bone solid solid knife I'm gonna be doing a video on that real soon and those those came out in the late 70s early 80s um, and there you can pick them up for 35 40 dollars on eBay I paid 40 for this one but anyway let's take a look at this Barlow which is it's rare on its own end um, but the fact that it's a granddaddy and it's a bone handle makes it even more rare because all you have to do is drop this on the concrete once and <clears throat> you're going to be looking at some major cracking. Um, in fact, mo most older granddaddy Barlows will have cracks in them somewhere uh, <clears throat> in the saw cut bone. But, let's open it up. It's too big to put on the pedestal of fame. So I'm just going to show you, show it to you this way. You'll see there's not a big fit here. But that's because this is an iron bolster and it's thick. You can't crimp this bolster down like on the newer Barlows where they may crimp that down to make it fit better. If you look you'll see that it's just a solid hunk of iron and it's called Ideal Cutlery Company and it's stationed or located in Reading, Pennsylvania or it was located there it's not there anymore I've um, I, I've been doing a lot of research and I can't find out much. I know the Monopoly game has a reading railroad in it, if that helps. But maybe my good friend Stuart Harvey can help me with this one. As you'll see, it's Ideal Cutlery Company. Now there was a, um, a company called The Ideal Knife Company. And they were associated with um, Imperial and Colonial in um, Providence, Ro Rhode Island. But they specialized, um, the, the, I the Ideal Knife Company specialized in shell handles. And as you'll see, this is real bone. Again, with uh, what's that called? Chamfering or something? I learned a new word recently. Um, woodworkers would know that where it's the 45 degree angle taper. I think it's called chamfering. But as you'll see, they didn't smooth it out, and I like that. It's just got the, the saw marks. And as you'll see, it's well put together. It's rare not to see a big granddaddy Barlow like this without any gaps down the liner. And I think this has been cleaned just by you can see where there's bright spots in the brass. See that? That's how you can tell if it's been cleaned. You can, you can almost see the white marks 
whether it was sanded or cleaned with a chemical but that brass should be actually darker than the uh, carbon steel spring so but that doesn't matter because they didn't clean it totally they left a lot there or cleaned up what they could but I really like it it's a big one I got this new uh, vintage um, <clears throat> measuring stick that's what I'll call it Stanley be surprised be precise say Stanley it's a good rule but as you'll see the handle is a solid five inches with the blade four inches right on the dot and a cutting edge of three and three quarter inch so she's a big girl really big girl and as, <clears throat> as you'll see I gotta apologize for my voice because we were out uh, yesterday we were out uh, running around and I kinda was doing some screaming and stuff so but anywhere anyway she's a beaut now this is a pattern I've always been fond of but I've only had a few and lately as you'll see there's one in the back there a Shat and Morgan with a spear point and that's like a 2010 but as far as for vintage granddaddies I have this 60s era Robeson which was actually built or made in New York I think it is they don't say it here but it's a Robeson Sure Edge USA and Robeson closed down their New York plant in 64, I think it was. So this is 50s, 60s, but it's a Delrin, strawberry saw cut Delrin. And so this is definitely 1930s here. Just a beautiful knife. We'll set it down here and we'll do a couple little comparisons. And you'll see it's in way better condition than the Robeson. The Robeson's actually been um, sharpened down quite a bit. Whereas the Ideal Company it looks to have like 100% steel left. Blade edge. And let's take a look at them. So my friends, until the next video, everybody take care, be good, bye bye.